have found the toughest build in all of Diablo 2. Sorceresses are known for being vicious spellcasters that rain down deadly amounts of elemental destruction. They are not known for taking a lot of damage. But recently we built a sorceress that flips that concept on its head, delivering less than impressive damage, but being practically unkillable. I didn't have a lot of faith in the tankiness of this build, but I was surprised. Not only could it contend with some of the better players on East, but I also took it to some of the most bad-mannered pub games and put it to the test. It was comical to see teams of players who were trying to ruin other people's fun run back to town with their tails between their legs, unable to kill this thing. In this video, I'm going to show you the concept behind what's called an immortal sorceress and give an honest take on how good I think this build actually is. Let's dive in. Energy Shield is a busted skill. It allows a sorceress to redirect damage from her life total to her mana pool. This works for just about any type of damage with the exception of open wounds and poison. The developers of Diablo 2 realized that this might get out of control, so they capped the skill at 95%, meaning that if players put all the points they could into this skill, they would always take some amount of damage to their life total. What they might not have taken into account is that there are ways to mitigate that final 5% of damage and in some cases, completely negate it. To really understand how we get to the point of being unkillable with this thing, we first have to understand how energy shield works. The trade-off for deflecting damage to your mana from energy shield is that the damage that it reflects is 200% what the original damage was. However, energy shield has a synergy called telekinesis. For each hard point we put into telekinesis, it reduces that 200% by a little over 6%. So instead of maxing our damage skills, if we put as many skill points as we can into telekinesis, we can bring that 200% damage reflection down to about 75%. 5% and actually reduce the amount of damage that our mana takes. This is important because our mana is going to take a beating with this build and we need to keep as much of it as possible at all times. When you're out of mana, you're out of luck. Obviously, we're putting as many points as we can into the busted skills called Energy Shield and Telekinesis. But after doing that, we only have room to max about three skills, so we need to be extremely efficient. Our dominant attack is Firewall. Yeah, our goal is to slowly cook our opponents to death while they exhaust themselves trying to kill us. Here's where the efficiency of these skill distributions comes into play. Fire Wall receives bonuses from a skill called Warmth. Usually sorceresses call this a one point wonder and everybody will put one point into it and just move on. But whereas this skill boosts the amount of damage to our main attack, we're gonna put as many points as we can into it. The extremely efficient thing about maximizing Warmth is that with this particular build, it actually regenerates our mana by 450 so when we're out there in the blood more and our mana pool is taking a beating, this is a super efficient way to replenish it and replenish it quickly. From there, we put the rest of our points into fire mastery because it significantly boosts our total fire damage output. There's actually a few variations of the Immortal Sorceress. We tested out lightning, cold, and fire versions of this build and came to the conclusion that the fire version was the most efficient and effective. Lightning attacks become so weak that your opponent can slap on a T-Gods and our attacks will essentially heal them. The cold skill version of this Sorceress fell somewhere in between, largely depending on your opponent's resistances and build. The Immortal Sorceress tries to take advantage of the damage calculation formulas in the game. The first First thing to know is that the damage you take in duels is less than you might expect. Because of the huge difference in monster and player life totals, all damage in PvP is multiplied by one sixth, meaning you do about 83% less damage in PvP than what appears on your character screen. This is known as the PvP nerf. So in case you ever wondered why your paladin that did 18,000 hammer damage wasn't one-shotting everybody in a public duel game, 
that's why. He actually only does 3000 damage because of the PvP nerf, which still isn't bad, but it won't immediately kill most high level duelers. We'll need an example to illustrate how damage is applied when energy shield is active. So let's use our Sork from the team set item duels we did recently with Mr. Llama SC. The first formula we'll look at is one responsible for calculating how much of that 18,000 damage will be redirected to our mana. To figure this out, we take the total amount of damage, 18,000, apply the PvP nerf of 1 6th, and get an even 3,000 damage. See why we picked that number? I've already figured out the math. From there, we take that 3,000 damage, reduce it by 25%, and that is the actual damage that will go to our mana, 2,250. Now mind you, 5% of that 3,000 damage will attempt to go to our life total. And I do mean attempt. It's that smaller amount of damage that brings us to the second most important part about this formula. This formula has to do with how damage is applied to a player's life total. To simplify it, it basically means that our resistances now get applied to that remaining 150 damage. Suppose we have 75% fire resist. That means we get to take that 150 damage and reduce it by 75%, leaving us with about 38 damage total. So to recap the basics of these two formulas, from this huge 18,000 damage fireball, we actually only take 38 damage from it. You might be thinking, hey, that's still some amount of damage. You are not immortal. Here's where the magic comes in. Two of the most overlooked item attributes are magic and physical damage reduction. Not percentages, but actual integer damage reduction. Usually these attributes are pointless. People find them on items all the time and probably don't give them any second thought. But in the case of this immortal sorceress, since the actual amount of damage being dealt to us is so low, these attributes can be a way to completely negate all damage dealt to her life total. To go further, there's a little known glitch in the game that favors this build. Physical and magic damage reduction stack on top of each other and are treated as one in the same in certain circumstances. For example, let's say our immortal Sork had only two physical damage reduction, but had 50 magic damage reduction from her items. And suppose our opponent is a barbarian wielding common items such as Grief, High Lords, or Ravenfrost, all of which have small amounts of magical damage on them. If after all of our damage nerfs we would take at least one magic damage and say 51 physical damage, all of the damage would be reduced to zero, even though we only have two actual physical damage reduced. Gotta love those little bugs in this game. With all of these little technicalities and formulas in mind, let's take a look at how we actually built an immortal sorceress. Admittedly, I don't even have the most ideal items for this build. I was that guy, always overlooking that magic damage reduced mod on items, so I don't have a plethora of ideal items kicking around for this build. And still, it's a tank. So with that in mind, instead of going through each item individually, I'm just going to breeze over them and explain the key things that we're looking for on these items. Whereas we're a build that relies heavily on our mana, we want to have a lot of it. For our Immortal Sork, we use a variety of items that increase our mana substantially. Although Caster Boots might seem like an obvious choice for this build, I've found that they actually need to be insanely good to outweigh the benefits of Marrow Walks. The amount of mana we gain from saving stat points is pretty much equal to the mana boost we can get from caster boots. Marowaks also regenerate mana and give us access to bone prison for those really bad mannered pub games. We're also aiming to get items that replenish our life. In the cases where our energy shield and integer damage reduction doesn't stop everything, we do take very small amounts of damage. Our life total is not so important on this build, but in those cases, we want to be able to replenish that life very quickly just in case. And again, the more damage reduction you can amass, the better. Mal and Sol runes are great for this. A common shield for this build is Girk Sanctuary. You can see that those two attributes exist in large quantity on this shield, but this item is key to the build for so many other reasons. The block percent is fairly high, giving us a good chance to straight up block our opponent's attacks and not worry about any damage coming through. 
Additionally, it replenishes our life and gives us a sweet boost to resistances. I can see some of you savvy players now checking these items to figure out what my breakpoints are, so let me just break it down for you. The cast breakpoint is rather malleable. I would suggest at least 63% and 105% if you can pull it off. This particular build pulls off 105 cast, but it's not necessary. We can get away with 63 if by making that sacrifice, we're stacking a lot more damage reduction and magic damage reduction. One breakpoint though that you'll almost always want to reach is that 86% faster hit recovery. I would highly suggest doing this with your charms in your inventory and not relying too heavily on your items for it. We'll also want to spend the stat points on this character very efficiently. The cool thing is we can actually strength bug ourselves with this build so people can't see that we're wearing Gurk Sanctuary and know that we're an immortal sorceress. The element of surprise. We're trying to tank as many hits as possible, and one of the best ways to do that is just to block the hit and have it not matter in the first place. That in mind, we want to put just enough points into dexterity to get us to that 75% or max block. The rest of our points into vita- Just kidding. All of them into energy. We do not give a shit about our life total with this build. We can literally be at one life and people can't kill us. Life total? Irrelevant. You're going to want to invest every point possible into energy, boosting up the amount of mana that you have by as much as possible. With all of these factors in place, this sorceress can take a beating and never die. Here we are in some bad-mannered public duel games, confusing the ever-loving shit out of people trying to kill us. This is the type of build where even if they do gang up on you and finally kill you, it's laughable to see how long it takes. Even when we're dueling in a good mannered way, the Immortal Sorceress lives up to its name against certain builds. Here we are dueling against TFC Priest, and for those who don't know, he's probably the most skilled Amazon player on Battle.net. He literally ran out of javelins and arrows trying to kill this thing. I'm excited that I can finally defeat Priest on one of my characters, but somehow it just... It doesn't feel right. I mean, you're probably not going to one-shot anybody on the battlefield, but on the other hand, you're probably not going to get one-shotted either. While I think the adventure of building a sork like this is extremely fun, I will admit that they do make for some pretty miserable duels. You can rack up a lot of wins by submission with this build, but, uh, you might not make a lot of friends. Quite possibly the best example of how much of a tank this build actually is, I was surprised to see that it barely struggled against something I always considered one of the nastiest builds out there, a Ghost Assassin. Against those types of hybrid builds that focus on damage diversity and not specialization, this build wrecks them. The worst matchups you'll run into are ones that do huge amounts of elemental damage. That's because ES does not take into account your resistances before applying damage to your mana. Therefore, real lightning sorceresses or real fire sorceresses will pose a huge threat for this build. Along those same lines, trap sins and FOH dins are also a problem. Oh yeah, and rabies druids, just forget it. Like, there's finally a build that rabies just destroys. Like, it's not even close. Other than that though, this build tanks for days, even at one life. If you like the challenge of surviving during a duel, this can be a fun build, but you'll need to be extremely patient because your damage output is not so great. Alternatively, if your goal is to troll the trolls, this is the perfect build. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video about the Immortal Sorceress. Let me know down in the comments if you end up giving it a try. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. that they actually need to be insanely good